Welcome to Edit for TV Nano Control Files. Uh, I got the Nano Control quite a while ago and uh, just didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do, so I've modified some files to make it do what I wanted to. So this is the manual you'll get when you order this bad boy, and it talks about installation, where to put the files I'll be sending you, um, how to use the core control editor to make some changes, and then how to use it. And there are three different files that come up, or three different scenes for the nano control. There's a combinator control, which is a number of things that I'll be showing you quickly. Uh, also, there's a mixer control that allows you to control eight channels in the record mixer. And also the keyboard control, scene three, which allows you to play the um, any device on screen uh, with this little keyboard. So and a few additional files. So that's a scoop on this uh, manual that you'll get with it. And so let's go ahead and take a look in Reason and record and see what happens. So uh, in Record, we'll make a new document. And the first thing you want to do, let's open this up so you can see what we're doing. First thing you want to do is go to your uh, keyboard preferences or keyboards and control surfaces. And let me delete the one I already have here. So delete. Are you sure? Delete. So you're going to want to do that too. Delete your old nano control. Um, keyboard control service and then you want to go to add and this little pop down thing shows up and you select manufacturer Korg model we're going to take the nano control and the name is Korg nano control the import you're going to select Korg nano control I'm not sure why on this Mac it's saying slider knob but Korg nano control is what you want and you hit OK and this will say thank you for supporting Ned Bauman. Da 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 da. Have fun. Okay. And there it is. Korg Nano Control. Close this up, and now it's ready to use inside uh, Record and or Reason. So let's go ahead and do something really quick here. Let's go to the um, uh, to the um, mixer view, and let's add 16 audio tracks. So I've got 16 audio tracks here now. And what we can do is we go to scene two of my Korg control files. What you need to do is assign the Korg nano control to this mixer. And a quick way to do that is to right click on the screen right here where the LED meter is and do lock Korg nano control to this device. So now it's locked to this device. So now fader one on the nano control controls fader one on the screen. Fader 2, Fader 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 controls the master. Okay, going back to audio track 1, the knob of course controls pan, knob 2, knob 3, knob 4, knob 5, 6, 7, and 8. And knob 9 is currently unassigned. And then top row of buttons does all the mutes. And the bottom row of buttons does the solos. And that's pretty much what scene two does. Um, the additional control, you can see the base channel for this particular setup is over here on audio track one. You can use button nine uh, lower to switch to the next group of eight, and it changes the base channel over here to nine. So now you've got fader and mute and solo and pan control of the next eight or whatever channels. Uh, and you can keep doing that with upper nine and lower nine on the nano control to switch from eight to eight to eight and keep going. So that's scene two of the nano control. Uh, scene one is something I've set up for the combinator. So let's close this out. Don't save. Let's make a new file and let's go ahead and create a combinator. And now what you've got with this combinator is, uh, let's go ahead and load something up. Oops. Uh, open. And I'm going to go ahead and load something out of the factory sound bank just to be simple and easy. And, uh, and what you've got is the four knobs in the nano control will control the four knobs in the combinator. So knobs one, two, three, and four. You've also got, uh, let's see, uh, let's go to Reason Factory Sound Bank. Let's go to Combinator Patches. Let's just go to uh, Piano and Keyboard, uh, Electric Piano. So let's take the middle one there. So let's close the programmer up, show devices. And so the first four knobs of the nano control control the four knobs of the combinator. And we turn these off manually on screen. The four buttons on the on the nano control, one, two, three, four, turn these on. Push them again, they turn off. The lower buttons of one, two, three, four do momentary. So it's on, then it's off as soon as you let go. This is kind of cool, so you can like just push the button and it just keeps flickering on and off. You can do like 
active on. If these buttons are already on, I just did that with the top row, you can use the bottom buttons to momentarily turn them off. So the top row is push on, push off. The bottom row of four buttons is uh, temporary or momentary. Um, next in line, we've got um, Fader 5 does the pitch wheel on the nano control, and Knob 5 does the mod wheel. And Fader 5, there's no center detent on the nano control, of course, so you have to uh, manually change this back to pitch bin zero, either on your controller or on the screen. Um, we've also got click volume, or click on, and volume on knob 6, turns click on, knob 7 controls volume, let's turn click back off. And then you've got tempo control on 8, up and down, upper and lower, so I'm do, just doing the... Uh, buttons on the nano control, control and tempo. And then also, real quick, I can just create another combinator here just to show you. Combinator, and let's make one more. So over in the um, sequencer track view, you notice I have three combinators. Buttons nine, upper and lower, switch from track to track. So I can uh, sw switch with just the nano control. And if you look over in the rack view, I am going from device to device and it should be noted that the rack does not necessarily correlate with what you have in your sequencer track the rack can be all mixed up so it's not moving up and down in the rack it's moving up and down in your sequencer tracks that's important to note um, and then um, I've got go to left uh, marker with upper six and you can change that to something let me type in like five just so you can see it switch so now I can use the um, Button 6 to go to left locator, and you see the transport jump to 5, and button 7 upper to go to um, the right locator. So it goes back and forth. You can see that over in the transport here that's jumping back and forth between left and right locators. And lastly, uh, lower 6 and lower 7 uh, does patch work. So like I've loaded this electric piano here, um, I can use the... Um, I can use lower six and lower seven to switch patches. So right now it's F electric piano. If I were to click on here and see the list of patches, that's what I'm stepping through with upper or lower six and lower seven. So I can do lower six, goes to the previous patch, previous patch, previous patch, or I can do next patch with lower seven and it goes back to that last patch. So that's with lower six and lower seven. And I believe that's it. Oh, and run and bypass are available as well on five upper and five lower. And lastly, on scene three, I have uh, note control. So, um, I'm playing that from the nano pad or nano key, nano control. Jeez, went through all three of them. Uh, nano control is playing that. So this is lower button one. Upper button one, lower button two, upper button two, and it just keeps going up. And it is polyphonic. And um, I use slider nine as a sort of a sustain pedal. See so a slide nine up and sustain is on. And then uh, knob nine is a as the uh, mod wheel, so you can at least get modulation in there. I didn't uh, program pitch in here because I just didn't. And if we go back to the uh, manual that comes with it, it's the manual. Uh, the manual shows you everything you need to know. It also includes. Um, the uh, graphics for what each of the scenes does. So this is scene one for combinator control, shows you what all the buttons does. Here's scene two for mixer control, shows you all the volumes, mutes, solos, pan, all that. And then uh, keyboard control, all the notes. And the notes are cool. Uh, I chose C2 as a lower note because um, you can, for example, create a redrum, redrum, and load up a patch and C2 is uh, lower button one that is uh, the kick and it, you can have control of all ten uh, of the redrum pads and you can play them right on the uh, nano control uh, 
Um, you also got control of Kong. And it's all accessible. Uh, all 16 um, pads can be accessed from the nano control. And then also with Dr. Octorex, same thing. You've got full control of at least the first 16 slices if you've got a, a Rex loop that has more than 16. At least you've got the first 16. So here we go, first 16. Let's select slice by MIDI. And it's polyphonic as well, you know. That's only going to show one slice on screen, but I am uh, hitting six keys, and this current Dr. Octorex has a polyphony of six, so I will be playing all six notes there. And um, same thing for here, you know, some um, some Rex loops have a, uh, a sustain portion to them. So let's see, instrument loops, um, let's see, let's see what we got. So here, um, as you can hear, I'm not hearing the full slice because there's no sustain. But if I raise slider 9 for that pseudo sustain pedal, so that's a scoop. And if you're interested in this, you can purchase it at my website. The URL is on the screen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.